Welcome back to Will, a wonderful world. Now before we continue, I just want to explain why things might sound a little bit different. I was experimenting with some sound settings in my headset. Try and uh, cut down on some of the ambient stuff that might get picked up. There's a lot of mouse clicking and stuff. And, and as a result, it kind of occasionally you've noticed in the first two videos of this series, occasionally kind of cuts off what I'm saying when I'm not speaking all that loud. Mm. It wasn't... At least when I, was, when I was listening back to stuff, it wasn't really too prevalent enough to make me scrap it. But I went back to settings that I had. It worked well enough. So hopefully there aren't any more problems there. But, I do have autosave data. That aside, let's get back into things here. We, last time we had a bit of a difficult time dealing with these two connected stories. Alicia, Carlos's older sister, and Kang Bekia, the, uh, lieutenant in this young fellow's unit. And we had a case... a case of, uh... these two letters being... these two events being linked. So only... once we got the best endings of these... do we unlock these. Unit 4, his time to shine. This ending is locked. This ending is locked out because this was the ending that triggered the linked letters. Something important that happened to the unit. This time we resolved the rest of Unit 4's event uh, pretty decisively, which this grayed out block means that there was probably a better outcome, which still involved answering the phone. Firefighter stepped on poor Carlos's phone. Which walked over there. Oh no, wait, this was the default ending. Okay. So now. shake things up a bit. Oh, we didn't change his outcome. We did change Carlos's, though. It was total chaos in front of the burning building. Fire trucks, firemen, fire hoses. The fire department had taken charge of the situation. I walked up to a fireman nearby and asked if there was anything I could do to help. Foreigner? He asked as he looked at me. You really shouldn't stay here. If we don't put out this fire today, we'll be dying a thousand deaths. He saw my confused look and added, You are new here. This is the headquarters of the Black Dragon Gang. The most powerful gang in this area. Yes, gang. Bad people. Gangs in your country, right? So stay away from here and leave. Ooh. Drugs, firearms, and our under underground gambling, and so on. All the blood gang, blood for blood. Stay away from here, leave. Wait, some soda or something. So we 
don't want your cell phone falling around. So. Fire truck arrived, cell phone rang, walked over there. This might cause a diversion. Nope. It did not. <laughs> We're gonna get all the Carlos sendings. Total chaos. Put my cell phone back in my pocket and left the crowd. Walk to the next street, asking the pedestrians about Alicia. Oh. Okay. Well then. So, my cell phone fell to the ground. My cell phone suddenly rang? Okay, that's a new ending. Phone kept ringing. What the hell would be calling me at this godforsaken moment? I was about to bend over and pick it up. Man suddenly got riled up. He waved the knife at me wild though. That's good. Not at his wife's throat. Don't move! Don't don't answer that phone. His wife saw a chance of the white knife had left his neck her neck, though she bit his left wrist as hard as she could. He dropped the knife out of pain, oh! And she ran over and hid behind him before he could pick it back up. The man suddenly began wailing like a child. Even you, Sue, even you are abandoning me? Fine, I'll just go by myself. He raised his knife and cut his own throat open. Jesus, I didn't even have enough time to react. I was suspended to the serious consequences caused by my unauthorized actions. Rip. Bad. <laughs> okay. Trend in a positive direction. This might be good. If we could get the knife out of his grasp. No, bad. What about, what about this? Okay, that's a new ending. Stop! I'm telling you to stop. He got riled up, his right foot missed the lead. That's bad. If we have any chance to talk him down, both of them disappeared. Oh, fortunately, the fire department had set up a cushion below. You moron! Do you know how big of a mess you have made? That case was not even under our jurisdiction. Back at the station, Tan Kang was outraged. He was yelling at me so loudly that the entire building could hear him. The hospital later called and informed us that the couple was okay. However, the wife had been four months pregnant. They couldn't save the baby. Oh, shit. I was suspended due to the serious consequences. This was all his actions. Rank A! So. If we walk over. Let's try this. This seems like it might be better. Because we need to answer the phone to change the outcome of something. Oh. We need, uh, our intrepid rookie to answer the phone to, uh, I guess, see the results of the, uh... Fate we changed earlier. But, anyways. Someone quickly ran past me and bumped into my arm. The phone was not cut in my hand. It stopped at another man's feet. The fire trucks hadn't arrived yet. However, this man in a black trench coat seemed to have summoned a lot of people to help put out the fire. Picked up my phone with his left hand and saw my sister's picture. Then he asked me in English what my relationship was with her. Oh! There was no expression on his face the entire time. After hearing my explanation, he tossed the phone back to me. Then he said, Come back here tomorrow. Oh! You know my sister? I walked up to him in excitement, and a huge man in a black suit stopped me. The man in the trench scale looked like he wasn't going to answer any of my questions turn his attention back to the men in the fire. The suit guy seemed like he was twice my size. He looked down upon me and I could see a deep scar on his face. Fine, I would come back tomorrow. 
Still, I never thought I would find a clue about Alicia just like this. The Lord must be blessing us. Sister, we would meet soon again. We would soon meet again. I just knew it. What the hell would be calling me at this godforsaken moment? I turned around and answered the phone quietly. It was Lieutenant Kang. The Lieutenant briefly asked me about the situation and told me to hand the phone over to the husband. It was the Boom Boom Moon Gang. What? Is it true? Oh my. Oh my. That's that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. He hung up the phone, dropped the knife, and hugged his wife, sobbing uncontrollably. Sue, it's all okay now. We can have our lives back. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. It was all my fault. What just happened? I took my phone back from the man, confused. A strong gust of wind blew past us, and the man lost his balance. Quickly reacted, took a big step forward, and grabbed him, trying to pull him back. I was pulled over instead! We fell off the ledge together. The world was spinning. It was ten floors off the ground. No one would survive if we hit the ground. I swung my right arm out as hard as I could toward the roof ledge. Something was flew out of the, my coat. It was a white ribbon I had wrapped around my forearm with a small spearhead tied to its end. The spearhead wrapped around the metal bar on the ledge a few times and tightened the ripple. Oh. It was my secret weapon. I called it my tan. For a moment I let out a sigh of relief, thinking we were safe. But the bar couldn't hold our weight and began to bend. I tightened my left wrist and grabbed the man's shirt harder. It burned the last drop of energy inside me with all of the adrenaline I had, and forced every single muscle cell to release all of their power. Justice was not something that I, on that I only talked about. I threw him up toward the holy shit! We were quickly moving away from each other in opposite directions. When the bar finally gave out and it was torn away from the concrete on the ledge, I began falling with it. I couldn't hear the wind gushing in my ears. This is my justice. Well. That went... Jimmy! Dios, ¿qué debería hacer? And Carlos? We still have a letter from Lee Wen to answer. So since this got here first, let's do this. The last class of the day was art. I pushed open the door to the classroom and I was shocked by what I saw. What was happening? The room that usually only had a dozen people in it was now almost full. It was like a scene from a beach in the middle of summer. There wouldn't be enough easels for everyone. That's when I was wondering whether I should leave and go study. I saw Jing one waving me over from the front row. Why are there so many people today? I sat down at the seat Jing had, Jing had saved for me. You really don't know anything, do you? Ms. Liu is on her maternity leave, so I have a new substitute today. Somebody saw him earlier in the office and posted his picture on the school BBS. He looks so handsome. I looked around, and only then did I realize that all the newcomers were girls. Why was Rocky here? What was a boy doing here? I took my phone out and tried to log into the BBS. I found myself unknowingly imagining what the new handsome teacher would look like while waiting for the page to load. Well-made pink shirt, rolled up sleeves, top button unbuttoned, pale and flawless skin, Impeccable face for the side. <laughs> the Wi-Fi signal wasn't very strong, and I couldn't look for a long time. In the front door, the room was slowly pushed open. With everyone staring at him, the new teacher slowly walked across to the podium and softly wrote his down his name on the blackboard. Wen Jovin. Oh! I'll be teaching the art class for the seniors, starting today. I looked up and down, and I noticed that this Mr. Wen was wearing flip-flops to class. His ensemble also included a pair of casual pants with legs rolled up, a gray t-shirt, and a wrinkled jacket. Not just that, his chin suggested that he hadn't shaved for days. He probably hasn't. I turned to my side and whispered to Jing, How is this old man handsome? Jing ignored me. I looked up and realized that the teacher was staring right at me. Oh no, he must have overheard me. 
Suddenly, Rocky raised his hand and asked loudly, Mr. Wen, how old are you? And do you have a girlfriend? The entire class erupted in a loud murmur. Everyone was staring at the teacher even more intensely. Thank you, Rocky, for getting me out of trouble. Mr. Wen slowly took off his jacket and laid it on the back of the chair next to him. Thirty-five. The girls immediately began whispering to each other. His response had certainly had intrigued everyone even more. Rocky, however, didn't seem to be satisfied with the answer. Well, fuck you, Rocky. Mr. Wen ignored the motion of the room and took a banana-shaped statue out of the accessory cabinet. People with an easel began to prepare their paper. The ones without took one out of the took one took out their sketching pads. The class was going to be over soon. Near the end of the class, Mr. Wynn said he would like to pick an assistant from the class. Anyone who was interested could stand up and nominate him or herself. However, he would need to check his or her sketch. Jing stood up! How brave! <laughs> oh. Mr. Wen walked over and picked up the sketch. He shook his head and tore it in two halves. Damn! Rocky stood up from his seat. I stood up from my seat, too. And then the bell rang. Jing was sobbing. I was completely in shock, too. Jesus, that was rude. Not only did Mr. Wen tear up her sketch, he even said to her, Are you serious? Did you seriously just draw something like that? I will not tolerate this kind of thing in my class. Jesus! We were just some regular high school students. We're not an art school. Are you serious? Rocky jumped right in front of the teacher. I tried to stop him, but it was too late. Rocky punched Mr. Wen right in the face. Damn, Rocky. Mr. Wen, however, didn't react, despite having just been hit by a student. He simply gave Rocky a glance and walked out of the room without saying a word. Rocky he was always so self-righteous. The only thing more important in his life might be his ball games. Quote, unquote, ball games. But if the bell had rung and the class had been over, he would have been, wouldn't have been bothered he would have gone off to play basketball. Oh, ball games. After that, Mr. Wood never came back to the class. Maybe someone filed a complaint about him, or maybe. I just had a feeling that he didn't look like he wanted to be a teacher. The next art teacher always dressed impeccably well. He was also incredibly dull. They win. That was interesting. Oh. <laughs> so this is interesting. Fuck you, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wynn tore up Rocky's sketch and said, Why don't you bring this to the class next time, so everyone can practice with it? <laughs> Rocky's face suddenly turned into the brightest red I had ever seen. A minute ago, he had been acting like the king of the world. What did he draw, exactly? You, 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 ah! He punched Mr. Wen right in his face. Mr. Wen, however, didn't react, despite just being hit by a student. He simply gave Rocky a glance, put down my sketch, and walked out of the room without saying a word. Some said Mr. Wen never came back to class. Maybe someone found a good about him, or maybe he didn't want to be a teacher. Yeah, yeah, incredibly dull. Bad. <laughs> so we need to. So the goal here is to keep Rocky from punching Mr. Wen. I stood up for my seat. Let's see what happens when he. Fucks up my sketch. He fucks up Lee Wen's sketch, sorry. Mr. Wen tore up my sketch and even said to me, I will not tolerate this kind of thing in my class. Jing was frightened and she sat back down. It was a complete shock and my nose started to feel stuffy. Is that really necessary? <laughs> you idiot! Rocky loudly jeered. That bastard! I made a face at him. Okay, rank B. Jing's day. Rocky's day still gets Mr. Wen punched. Oh. Okay, that's me. 
How many endings? Oh wow. We still have three more endings. Uh, Rocky stuff in the seat. Bell rang. Tor sketch. Bad. Tor Rocky sketch. So. sketch. Canon ending. Well, the original ending where he tears up Jigging sketch. I feel like the best... still plays out. on the track field and told her dozens of jokes until she finally felt a little better. That old man. Not only did he dress terribly, his temper was even worse. How would the school hire such a person to be a teacher? Rank A! So, the obvious next step is me. Nope, rank B. Tore up my sketch. This is new. Doth I protest? Big Wasabi, I was completely in shock too. Terrible sketch. Seeing Jigen crying like that, I couldn't control my anger. Mr. Wynn, you're way out of line. You need to apologize to Jig. Mr. Wynn gave me a glance and picked up my sketch. Boring. Rocky picked up his basketball in front of his seat and casually walked out of the classroom to go do jock things. Other people were leaving as well. There were fewer and fewer people left in the room. I put my stuff in the backpack and went to my backpack, getting ready to leave. You, stay and clean up the room. What? I stopped what I was doing and looked at Mr. Wynn in disbelief. He handed my sketch back to me. After all, you're my assistant for this course now. Oh! I turned away and walked back to the front of the classroom. Then realized that everyone who was still in the room was staring at me. Everyone looked like they were gawking at a circus monkey on the street. What the hell? I had no intention of being a freaking assistant to that guy. Jing put her arm around my shoulder. Congratulations! Let me buy you let me buy you dinner sometime, you poor kid. <laughs> I burst out laughing. Well, whatever. <laughs> That's gotta be yes. Yep. All right. We got mail. <laughs> Oh. Oh no. That sounds concerning. Alright, well. I guess let's do Jimmy and Carlos's side route here. Relay race, Mr. Kwan. My mother had always complained that I never exercised. She would always say that if I ever needed to run away from bad guys, I would be dead in just a few steps. 
There were not that many bad guys in the world. Besides, even if there were, I think I could just stay in my room and not go outside. They will find you, Jimmy. What is the information area after all? This looks like I can get information online. I can play with the real world in the palm of my hand. Okay, Jimmy. Yet even though I managed to dodge all of the recruiting activities from the school sports beat, roommate had totally ruined my perfect plan. Today was the all-school sports beat. I thought I could have made up an excuse, like a foot injury, so that I wouldn't even have to sit under a tree. I could just stay in my room and play on the computer. Rocky had signed me up for a 4x400 relay pace without me even knowing about it, and now I had to stand under the scorching sun. 400 meters! Madness. Last time I had been in a race, I was still in elementary school. I hadn't even hit puberty. I thought I might die on the track today. <laughs> The gun went off. Oh, damn. I took it from his hand. I never knew that Rocky was so fast. Our team was actually in first place during his third leg run. Still, why was I the final leg? I suck! <laughs> what were people thinking? There was nothing else I could do but run like my life depended on it. People along the tracks were cheering for me. I couldn't really tell who they were, but this actually felt pretty great. It was only 50 meters from the finish line, and no one had caught up with me yet. Or they had all passed me yet. I must have underestimated myself. Haha. <laughs> Look at me, Mom. Your son is about to win a race. Look straight ahead to the finish line. Then I saw her. Then I. Then everything went to shit. I saw my crash. Oh no. Don't distant track me at such a moment. It was too late. I only lost my focus for one second. And the tip of my foot tripped over a bump on the track. My entire body left the ground. And then. My face smashed into the ground. Time I got back up, the other teams had all run past the finish line. Oh, no! Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy. What's up? Apologies. Oh, this is the next day on Carlos' friend. Although it had just suffered a fire, Pitt Street 99 was still open for business. It was a small and old building. Walls were covered with fires and graffiti. I walked through the main gate and saw a narrow staircase. There was also a small desk at the bottom of the stairs, facing the entrance. A man with spiky hair was sitting beside, behind the desk with his legs crossed. He put down the magazine, which had a woman with big breasts in the cover, and asked what I was doing there. I told him that a man in a long black trench coat had told me to come here. Trench coat. Everyone here wears a trench coat. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is not some place that you can just walk in. You better get out of here before I stab you with a knife. Oh. Spiky hair picked up the magazine again. I tried to recall what the guy looked like. White shirt, gray vest, short black hair, it was combed to the back. He also had a big guy in a black suit with a scarred face by its side. A scarred face. Mr. Tough. Hold on. This guy you're talking about. Have his right hand. Speggy Hair puts down his magazine and his legs. Leaned toward me and asked quietly. Right hand? I couldn't remember exactly, but I did remember that he had picked up my phone with his left hand. He shouted upstairs. Mr. Kwan! The guy you've been waiting for is here. I looked at the staircase with anticipation. However, the man who came down was not the one I had met. He was wearing a leather jacket pair of sunglasses. He had high cheekbones, and he looked much older. He took me all the way to a, to a suburb on the back of his motorcycle. Mr. Kwan spoke very fluent English. He told me that the building we had just been in was the headquarters of the Black Dragon Gang, the biggest gang in Hong Kong. The person who had told me to come was the second in command of the gang. He had instructed Mr. Qu Mr. Kwan to induct me as a pledge. Oh. A pledge was a, poten was a potential candidate to join the gang. This seems bad. Carlos, no. Don't join gangs. But before officially admitting me, Mr. Kwan had to make sure I was qualified. Mr. Kwan put a gun in my... Oh, God. And 
I was stunned. You don't have to do it. If you're not willing to do this, we can leave right now. You will just pretend that you have never met me. Mr. Kwan took a small metal box out of his pocket and threw a piece of gum in his mouth. Uh, no, I'll do it. I couldn't let go of any chance to find Alicia. Besides, I had a brilliant idea. I went into a convenience store nearby. Oh. Most of the goods of the sh on the shelves used to seem to be used goods. Some of them were covered with a thick layer of dust. The owner looked like he was over 60. He was reading a book behind the counter. There were just the two of us in the store. I walked up to the counter, smashed my left hand down on it, lifted the gun with my right hand, and pointed it at, pointed it at his head. I yelled in my meanest voice. Hey, give me all your money! I'm gonna blow your head open! And I whispered to the old man about what was going on, making sure that Mr. Kwan wouldn't be able to hear me. I was so nervous, even though I had no intention of robbing him for real. I handed him what was in my hand. P please! The owner put down his book and looked at me, pleading me. Oh, we need the money here for my wife's hospital bill. I can't give it to you. Everything else in this shop, if you like, is all yours. All yours, please. Please. Apparently, he had only heard my threats, not my whispers. Tears rolled down my face. I must have lost my mind to be robbing a poor old man like this. Even if it was all fake, I should never should have done this. I handed the gun to the owner and loudly told him why I was there, and what I had been through. Uh, to my utter surprise, after hearing my story, the owner offered to help me ask about my sister. He even asked if I'd be willing to stay here, and how about the store? Oh! He said I was welcome to stay, as long as I didn't mind the little wage he could afford. I gave the old man a huge hug. Outside the store, Mr. Kwan had already left. I would never see him again. I started working at the store while looking for information about Alicia. Days went by, but I still hadn't heard anything. Lord, what should I do to find my sister? Should I have joined the gang instead? Carlos, oh. That took a turn. Oh. Special restrictions. Oh, no. <laughs> Special restrictions. Special restrictions? Yes, remember I told you that the white pieces could be moved anywhere? Except past the first and the last black pieces in the letter, of course. Uh, yes, I do remember. When special restrictions are in place, will no longer be the case. He's put I hand at him, and I caught it from both on the left side, and the former has to appear after the lap. So you can't hand the baton over and then have it, have it back again. Furthermore, if you put the gun one off piece on the left side, too, it has to happen before the match begins. So there's another sequence restriction on these pieces, too. All sequence restrictions are labeled by a number. Pieces with smaller numbers cannot be placed after the pieces with larger numbers. It makes sense. And see, aforementioned restrictions only apply to the left side. There's a straight vertical line. Okay, so... Okay... Numbers marked on the left side of the line. Oh boy, I'm completely lost. <laughs> that's not all. That's not all. Sequence, there are other special restrictions such as conflict. Oh, I like these. Well, oh, <laughs> I took the baton from his hand and I gave him the baton back. Sure. Oh, okay. So that's not going to change Carlos' ending. Fuck it. We'll see what happens to Jimmy. Finally handed the baton off to the next leg. If I had to take one more step, I was going to throw up blood and die right there. Right then. Our team was in second place. It was all up to Rocky. Oh. So by putting that piece in, we're no longer the final leg. Rocky soon finished the first 200 meters, but something didn't seem right. Had he eaten something bad today? 
Then not only did Rocky fail to pass class two, he was eventually passed by class four t ten meters away from the finish line. Sigh. That sucked. Well, being part of this actually felt pretty great. So this is a bad outcome. Okay, so there's only one good outcome here. Oh boy. Alright, that changes Carlos. What do we take from his head? Then was so frightened that he was shaking. He immediately took the few large bills out of a drawer and handed them to me. Apparently he had only heard my threats, not my whispers. Looking upon a sixty-year-old man with an ailing wife at home, crying, begging me to spare his life, I could barely hold the tears in myself. Mr. Quan took the money from my hand with a satisfied look on his face, and was then admitted into the Black Dragon game. A few days later, in the evening, I took a motorcycle from someone else in the group and came back to the store. I stuffed all the money I had borrowed for the past few days under the rolling door of the store. Sorry and thank you, Mr. Owner. Whoa! That was S. So what was the trigger for S? I guess both of those. So I guess Carlos has to join the gang in order to get anywhere. So... Oh, that only changes. I hit the only valuable thing I owned in my left palm when I smashed my hand down on the counter. My cell phone. The owner looked outside the window and seemed to understand what was going on. I tipped the cell phone quietly and took the few large bills out of the drawer, which was worth much more than my phone, and handed them to me. Thank you so much, Mr. Owner. I left the store and handed the plastic bag with the money to Mr. Kwan. How dare you play a trick on me? You think the Black Dragon Gang is just a joke? He punched me in the head and knocked me to the ground. And he gave me several heavy kicks to the stomach. Jesus. Passes by all... Or, Around us, all hurried away, afraid of being caught in the middle. Bad. This seems... This is a bad ending. Yep, that's a bad ending. <laughs> That is definitely a bad ending. A dark red hole appeared on the forehead of the owner. Oh, Jesus. Apparently he had only heard my threats, but not my whispers. No matter how hard I tried to signal him, the old man could not get my hints. Just when I was about to give up, the gun went off by accident. There was blood. Everywhere. I ran out the store, completely forgot about Mr. Kwan, and began running back the way we had come from. Mr. Kwan never tried to catch me. A few people on the street gave me some strange looks. I must have thought that I was a madman. I wasn't mad. I was guilty. I was guilty of killing someone. I had to confess. I must confess. Before sunset, I was sitting in the police station. There were blisters on both my feet. Lord, I have to confess. Please forgive me. Bad. Oh, whoa. what? Huh? A piece went missing. Hmm. Sometimes this will happen. The store owner was killed. The result, neither the owner nor Carlos would be able to carry out the remaining actions. So, the white piece disappeared. The piece will disappear when the subject of the action described is no longer active. Okay. Only confined to the center of the letter. Must be because of someone mentioned in the letter. And it depends. Think about why they might disappear. Okay. Anything with a gun is bad. Yeah, 
anything with a gun has got to be bad. So let's keep the gun from going off. Okay, so this is a good outcome. Jimmy's last ending. So what's gonna... Okay, I finally handed the baton off to the next leg. If I had to take one more step, I was gonna throw up blood and die right there, right then. Yeah. Our team was in second place. It was all up to Rocky now. Rocky soon finished the first 200 meters, but something didn't seem right. Had he eaten something bad today? Let's go, Rocky! Go, go, go! I'll buy you ice cream! Now that I participated, I want us to win, too. I couldn't help but start cheering Rocky on. Many of the people around me were cheering for him, too. They knew that participating in this kind of event could actually feel pretty great. Yeah. Rocky suddenly sped up. He finally ran past class two with ten meters left. He crossed the finish line first. Well done. We're happily hugging and showing, shoving each other near the finish line. My stomach hurt a little. Can we do barbecue instead of ice cream? You're funny. Pushed Rocky aside and caught a glimpse of someone. It was my crush! Yeah. And she was looking at us! Yeah. And she was smiling! Yeah. Wow, I never knew I could get this kind of reward by participating in the meet! I felt so happy! So happy! Yes. Well, that's the last of, uh... Jimmy's outcomes. Wow, so we literally can't get both S rank. We literally cannot get both S ranks here. Interesting. So what have we done here? Honestly, I think this is okay. Because I don't want Jimmy to join a gang. The gangs are bad, Jimmy. Jimmy. Gangs are bad, Carlos. Oh shit! <laughs> Never mind. Both S ranks. Oh. Porque me pasan este tipo de cosas. Oh. Who is this? Spicy Burger. People 
he dislikes. Chang Gyung Min. Chang Gyung Min, subordinate. Min Jun. Subordinate, exited with sniper rifles. Initiative 5, Captain Gong. 29, failed to free the hostage in a gang related hostage situation. Not held responsible. Goddess of Fortune. Oh. Hey. Education, barely any. Yeah, I still like that you joined the Black Dragon Gang. My son, but. Missing persons. Oh, jeez, that's. Ah. Oh. All right. Well. I guess we can at least. <laughs> I guess we can at least do some more Lee Wen and Jimmy. Lee Wen, a senior at Ingnan High School. Today, the new art teacher assigned me as his assistant for the class, so I have to stay after class and clean up the art classroom. I tried to sneak a few peeks at this strange teacher while I was reluctantly mopping the floor. I was looking over the sketches that had been left in the room one by one, and then throwing them in the trash. Jeez. Just the two of us in the room. Neither of us was talking. Hey, W. How was your first day? It was my homeroom teacher, Miss Yang. I burst into the room and broke the silence. I said hello to me. Held onto Mr. Wen's arm like a little girl. Putting what I had heard from Jing, Mr. Wen and Miss Yang went way back. It was also Miss Yang who had recommended Mr. Wen for the newly vacant teaching position. The beautiful Miss Yang was said to be notoriously hard to get. Many male teachers at the school had allegedly been turned down by her. Fraternization with co-workers was a bad thing. Was she involved with Mr. Wen? grabbed the trash can and deliberately left the room. When I got back, there was no one there anymore. Oh. Someone appeared to have already replaced the barrel for the water dispenser, too. It seemed that I could finally go home. Yay! It was starting to get dark when I finally finished cleaning the classroom. I walked out of the school gate and noticed that Mr. Wen was walking not too far in front of me, going in the same direction. That was strange. I thought he had left a while ago. I didn't want to talk to him, so I stayed behind at a distance, quietly watching his back. Such a bad-tempered and terribly dressed man. How exactly did he become a teacher again? For I knew it, Mr. Wynn had walked into the dark alley that led to my place. However, as soon as I stepped into the alley myself, I suddenly felt that something was wrong. I immediately backed out. Mr. Wynn had been stopped by two men, one in front of him and one the other behind him. One facing my direction was wearing a tank top. He flashed a pocket knife in Mr. Wynn's face. Oh, Jesus. I hid behind the corner and tried to peek around it. Never take that alleyway again, Li Wen. Mr. Wen took the took out his bullet and handed it over without any resistance. That was smart, I thought. Better safe than sorry. I tanked up then I fiddled with his wallet for a while, then slammed it on the ground. Twenty? Do you think I'm a fucking beggar? Well you're mugging people for money, so. Punched Mr. Wen in the face. Mr. Wen stumbled back and bumped into the guy behind him. He was still not resisting. The tank top guy placed his knife on Mr. Wen's face. Be smart. Give me all your money. Turn a good look at his face. Maybe that 20 yuan really was all Mr. Wen had. He 
were too far away from the main street, and there was no one else around who could help. I suddenly had an idea. I took my racket out of my bag and grabbed a tennis ball. Oh, no. This was the time to test the results of all my nightly practices. Ball toss. Back swing. Please the target, please. The ball was flying at a speed of 180 kilometers per hour. Gust of wind suddenly swept by. The ball was blown off his path by the wind and it missed its target. It said it hit the back of Mr. Wind's head. Uh, oh. Mr. Wind fell under the ground and it was a thud like a brick. The two men noticed and they seemed to be just as shocked as me. I must have thought I wanted to kill the man lying on the ground for some reason. <laughs> the tank top guy took one step toward me. Began to picture how they would force me into the corner, pull a chainsaw out from behind them, and, and cut me to pieces. Oh no, I couldn't stay there any longer. I'm sorry, Mr. Wynn! I screamed silently in my head as I ran away with my hands covering my face, leaving Mr. Wynn there by himself. Next day, Mr. Wynn did not come to class. The school put out an announcement saying that he had been badly injured during a robbery, that he was in a coma during the hospital. How fast is your serve, young lady? The announcement also reminded the students to be careful on their way back home. It's all my fault. I should not have left him alone. There must be a better way. They went. Wow. You've got a good heart, um, but that that was Oh dear. We can we can do something about that, I guarantee it. My name is Jimmy. I'm a transfer student. I arrived in Beijing not too long ago. Now I'm a senior at Yunnan High School. The reason I chose this school is because I had a serious crush on a girl here. A few days ago, I was fortunate enough to be her partner in a doubles tennis match on my first day at school. At first, I was so thankful that I got that I thought the goddess had finally smiled upon me. They would have, yet I was totally embarrassed because I had never even played tennis before. <laughs> After that happened, I made up my mind. I was determined to improve my tennis skills, just in case I had another chance like this. Just at the serve speed of the ball machine, walked back to the baseline, raised my racket, and got ready. In order to get better, I had bought a season membership at a club. I even finished watching all 178 episodes of the Kid of Tennis anime. Jeez, I had complete faith in myself. I believed I could make it work all this time. Hmm. Next time I got to play with her, I would show off my kick serve, my pickup volleys, my drive D. Even my zero style slices to her. Maybe she would look at me with admiration. <laughs> the ball machine shot the ball out with a pole. The ball was flying at 140 kilometers per hour. Ah! What a sneaky machine! How dare it serve the ball when I was when it wasn't paying attention? Oh gosh, my wrist really hurts! The doctor said that I had hurt my tendon. I needed to rest my right hand for at least a month. Oh jeez. said I should not even use a mouse, not to mention playing tennis. No! Doctor, I want to play! My dear goddess of fortune, if you can hear me, please heal my wrist. It's necessary. I'll even swear off video games for a month as a sacrifice to you. Uh, please, Jimmy. Well, okay. Oh, oh. This letter there is the conflict special restriction, which we talked about before. It says these two letters, the two pieces, are in conflict with each other, so they can't exist in the same side. Means they cannot be moved to the same side. If you try to do that, they will automatically switch places with each other. Both pieces are labeled the double headed arrow, which stands for conflict. It is. Okay then, I'll try my best to remember. Good guy. Let's do this. This seems to be the easiest stab code. Lee Wynn never misses. I shuddered a little. Before I realized it, the ball was already right in front of me. I was so startled that I had to awkwardly block the ball with a racket. I accidentally hit the sweet spot. It actually felt really great. Wait, had I just hit it? Yes, I had! I had just hit an underspin shot. Hmm. 
He falls slower than a flat, uh, flat shot or a top spin shot. I was gonna say, is that the drop shot? Oh wow, I learned how to hit it under spin shot. Banzai! Banzai! Jumped up and down with excitement. People nearby were shooting me at admiring strange looks. What does Banzai mean? Was he hurt? No. Banzai is a Japanese phrase. It means hooray. Well, based on my observations, lots of people outside of Japan use this word as well. And from many different countries, and most of them are men. <laughs> oh, and they share another common characteristic. What is that? They are all sick. <laughs> <laughs> Stop judging me, Will. Single? What's wrong with being single? Everything. Being single hurts. <laughs> In the end, bonsai still means hurt, right? See? Bonsai means being single, and being single means it hurts. This is very straightforward. <laughs> I think I'm single too. Bonsai. <laughs> <laughs> the ball hit the forehead of the tank top guy, exactly as I planned. I fell down to the ground with a thud like a brick. Before the second man realized what had happened, I sprinted toward his back as fast as I could. I smashed his head with my racket with all my strength. Holy shit! Then I grabbed Mr. Wynn's hand and ran towards the end of the alley. Ten minutes later, I was panting heavily, and I realized I had run already run all the way back to my apartment building. Oh, and I was still holding Mr. Wynn's hand. <laughs> Mr. Wynn, uh, excuse me. This is where I live. Let go of his hand. Well, I might as well do a home visit then, shall we? A home visit? For a senior? By an art teacher? Uh, Mr. Wayne, actually, uh, there is no one else home. I walked in front of him and explained. Do your parents always work late? Mr. Wayne looked up at me with a, while climbing the stairs. The sunlight coming through the windows in the hallway was making him squint. But no, I, I live alone. He stopped in front of room 413. Mr. Wynn didn't follow me. He stopped in front of room 414. Oh! 14. He pointed at the door next to it with his thumb and smiled. I suddenly remembered. The first day after I had moved in, the manager, Uncle Soon, had told me. A very famous artist from abroad had been living in the apartment next door. Oh, so that was him. We'd actually met each other before, when I broke into his room. Okay. Okay, so there were still a few endings here. I think I'm happy with this outcome. Okay. This is a good point to end this video. When we return, though, we'll meet a new character. And see how Carlos is, uh, holding up in the Black Dragons. He's trying his hardest. So until next time, till then... <laughs>